Hello Shandoka fans, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Modular Electric Motorcycle. I'm Ernest Ike, I've invented this adapter that allows us to convert any gas motorcycle over to run on electricity. And this design allows us to have modules that fit into each of the different motorcycles that you see behind me. So we have a very simplified system for building and operating your motorcycle, but you can personalize it to be just exactly yours. So let's dive into episode two and take a look at the evolution of the retrofit adapter that I offer through Shandoka and the way it makes it easy for you to convert a motorcycle that you can find for a few hundred dollars in a non-running condition and convert it and build it into an always upgradable electric motorcycle. This was the design that I had for the very first prototype of the Shandoka Retrofit Adapter. As you can see, duct tape and cardboard are an inventor's best friend. So when we peel back the wrapper design that's still basically intact in our current version, you can see that we had the idea of battery packs slightly tilted forward and that's still an option with the current design. This battery pack was much larger, you can see it came up above that central compartment and this it was intended to be on both sides for a highway capable version of the electric motorcycle system. With the wrapper removed and the battery pack taken away, you can see the two central battery packs that at that time were mounted one above the other and offset just slightly inside so that we could squeeze as much batteries into the frame as possible. This adapter has two large battery packs in the central compartment and the same battery pack would be split into two packages for either side in the initial version. So that was three large battery packs, but indeed, I needed more than that. I needed a total of five battery packs this size to make the motorcycle go about 50 miles at 60 miles an hour for a top speed. So we had the idea of these additional battery packs would be side bags on the motorcycle. So although we were adding about 250 pounds of batteries in that initial design, we were moving about 150 to 200 pounds of engine out of the motorcycle. So we were still, even in 2010 standards, staying about the same weight for the Shandoka conversion as the donor motorcycle was. So next, let's take a look at the second version. The second mock-up version, I wanted to be a lot closer to how we would actually manufacture the uh, adapter. So instead of using aluminum and committing to the effort of cutting and welding and creating that way, this adapter mock-up is actually made from particle board, uh, cut down, and then masonite used uh, with caulk to get very close to the dimensional materials that we'd be working with. This is a good point in the build to take a closer look at the adapter because it shows where the modules fit inside of the finished unit. And what you're looking at are support gussets uh, that are there for strength and to help give us a definition of the overall shape when we're finished. And we have cover plates to give access to our side panel. There's also a cover plate that gives access to the center compartment where the primary power supply would be stored. Uh, each of these gussets is giving us sort of a placeholder that we know inside of our computer model so that we can then finish out the skin design. This overall adapter will have a smooth outer shaped skin, much like the wing of an aircraft. It's going to give us superior strength, great aerodynamics, an easy way to personalize the adapter to be yours through simple cover plates or all the way to having custom designs and outer shell skin. And at the same time, it provides protection for the pathways for our wiring systems so that if there ever is an incident with the vehicle, even if it you know, falls over on its own or while someone's riding it, it, the electric systems are protected and housed inside of a system. This design gives us the ability to really armor everything about the operational systems of the motorcycle. Okay, so we've got our blocks as one method for finishing off the adapter unit and getting a smooth outer surface for aerodynamics and just general looks. There's a couple of other ways to go about uh, finishing off your motorcycle. One of the other ways is with a fairing. When you use the original fairing from the motorcycles, you're able to hide the entire adapter unit underneath that original skin. So on the Kawasaki Ninja series, on the Honda CBRs, and a number of other manufacturers' sport bikes, the original fairing can actually fit over the slim version of our adapter. And in the burly heavy-duty uh, battery packs, uh, the big stuff that we want to put on the bikes, we can just trim away some of these inner fairings or, of course, create all new custom bodywork. Now, let's look at one more method for completing out the, uh, the system. 
Here's our digital representation of the outer skins that can be welded in place onto an adapter unit. Now when using this method, we're creating the lightest and sturdiest version of the adapter unit. It's built a lot like an airplane wing, where the outer skin is structurally coupled to the inner compartments, and the overall combination creates a very lightweight, very strong adapter unit. These are what you'd be looking at for your highest performance sport bikes and longest range cruisers. Well, I think that about does it for episode two, the evolution of the adapter system. Thanks for following along as I've shown you some of the basic underlying ideas here. And I look forward to showing you more of the details as we finish out this adapter and get ready to power up the motorcycle for this spring. See you soon.